Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the Sunday live stream. These are the days that I really like to kind of just sit back and take accountability about what's going to happen or what could potentially happen coming up very soon. So just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to talk a little bit about the hardest thing you can possibly do in crypto digital assets, which is selling. We can buy all day long. We can make it easy. But I have to tell you, it's a little bit more difficult when we do a little bit of the four letter word that everybody he hates to hear, which is selling. And to help me do those things, I've invited a friend to come on to uh, help me out. And this is uh, Wes from Smart Money Crypto. Wes, thanks uh, for coming on for the show for the first time. Hey, Rob, thanks for having me on. Uh, big fan of the show, love what you do. And uh, yes, yeah, pleasure to be on. Looking forward to uh, chatting to you. Yeah, man. So Wes, where are you at right now? Uh, so I'm in England, uh, just outside of London, a little town called Brighton. Uh, been in crypto for about five years. Uh, used to work at a cryptocurrency exchange in London, um, quite oh. quite an old one, um, CEX.io. I don't know if you, you've heard of them. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just worked in uh, web free marketing and been trading for about five years now. Ah, perfect. You, you would like my friend Tom Crown. He's actually in the uh, comment section right now piping off about True Flayson's newest reading, which we'll get to in a second. But <laughs> what I want to talk, because I, I brought you on because I am, I'm pretty good at buying stuff. Um, actually, I'm fantastic at it. I'm great at buying the dips. I think we all are. The problem is, and no one talks about this, it's about selling. And I think we have to get this in our consciousness about that the time is coming. So I put out this tweet. I said, look, everybody likes to talk about buying, but if you talk about selling, we should be talking about it all the time. Strategies, goals, price points, et cetera. The diamond hands narrative for everything crypto is a loser's war cry. And if that offends you, I'm sorry to say, it's true. If you diamond hands everything all the way up and all the way down, it's going to be a very difficult cycle for you. And that's just how it is. Now, when I got in, for, first of all, was how, how long you've been? Because you've been trading for five years. How long for crypto itself? Uh, crypto, I got in. So the November that's just passed before the start of the bull run year is when I got in last cycle. Just, just a little bit before then. So I got lucky. I got in just before the bull run. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. So I will tell you, like, I've been in since 2017. Nobody talked about taking profits back then. Mm. If you talk about taking profits, you were labeled weak. You were labeled paper hands. And you were labeled essentially against Bitcoin and everything else that crypto stood for. So I'm glad to see that we've changed a little bit. The problem, I think, is this. It's not just the narrative. It's the people who think, you know what? If it goes up, I should take some profits, but maybe you could 10x. And that's why I reached out to you. Now, you can follow Wes it's at uh, SMC over on X. He's got a great channel. There was two videos that it came out. And this one in particular, where he talks about, I sold. And I my ears perked up. I'm like, oh, I got to take a listen to this. So I'm not going to play the 11 minutes, but I linked his channel and X in the description. I'm going to play the first 40 seconds. And I want you guys to listen to this about what he says about taking profits. Let me... Get the actual correct tab so you can actually hear this. 40 seconds, here we go. Oh, and there's a little bit of echo because that's on my side. It's because a lot of people in the space, they don't take profits, right? And they don't have a strategy, they don't have a plan. And it's really important because sometimes you'll you'll make you'll be up, you know, five, six, seven hundred percent and the project will completely crash and you're not taking profits, right? So Look at the price of Olas uh, when I made this video and then look at the price now. So this is when I made the video. And why did I sell here? Well, because I posted to buy Olas at 126, right? So smart money crypto, what do we do? We look on chain, we see what all the smart money are buying. Loads of smart money were flooding into Olas all of a sudden, right? Tons of, 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 of wallets that consistently make money are buying something all of a sudden. I'm going to ape in and buy it. And this, and I posted here, buy alert, 126, 57 million market cap. And look what Olas done. It went up. Okay. So that's great. So when I saw that, I'm like, and I watched the whole thing. It was very great. I didn't, but I want you to kind of bring us up to speed about what that all was and how you decided at that particular moment that, hey, maybe I should take some profit. So I think there's a, if you want to take a look at this or what do you want to tell us about like how that actually worked out? Oh, sorry. Oh, what sorry. Mike's cut out. Mike's cut out. Can you hear me now? Gotcha. gotcha. 
Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, so I trade in two different types of ways. So I, I do fundamental analysis, right, as, as I did last cycle. One of the things I wasn't doing last cycle is, is monitoring the on-chain activity. And I think the luxury, uh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the luxury we have in blockchain is that we're able to, unlike stocks, you know, you can't see what, what they're doing with their investments. You can't see what they're selling in blockchain. We can see every single transaction. Um, and I use a software. It's, it's, it's quite expensive. It's not access, uh, accessible to everybody but it's a really powerful uh, powerful tool since i started using this um I've, I've just my game has changed my profits have increased i've been able to find gems so early i've been able to you know take profits and one of the ways i do that is i monitor the smart money so in here you have a section called smart money and what is smart money so you got smart money in wales right so wales are people who have lots of money so like millionaires and and technically they can't be classed as smart money unless they're making consistent profits so smart money are tend to be quite big accounts but they're consistently making gains and returns and their win right. rate is, is typically around eight or nine times out of ten so when you see this sort of activity here so this is why uh, smart money accumulating and you see where it starts to trend up here okay um, that's when it sort of spikes up on my radar so you've got this period here where it's sideways usually a project's building here and there's not much activity and then you see this sudden interest in in, in smart money and a lot of smart money accounts are not just traders a lot of them are youtubers you know people with big twitter accounts so you also when you see this accumulation you tend to see a lot of um social activity on twitter and and youtube as well so I go into here and then I just track their wallets, right? And I can see when they're buying, when they're selling. So this trader, for example, I've tagged his wallet as gets in before the news. So his wallet, he typically buys things before they're listed on Coinbase. And he typically really? buys things. He gets the news early, right? Yeah. So I track I track his wallet. You can see here he's, he's sold 84,000 OLAS this week. Um, his remaining balance is 215,000. Then you can go mm. into his wallet. And you can see his profit and loss. So he's made 139% on OLAS. His cost price was 182. Um, and uh, you can see when they're when they're buying and dumping, and you can even go in and see all of their transactions. So he's actually holding SAVM, which we talked about earlier. Um, mm. He's got $325,000 in that token. He's holding OLAS. He's holding Peas, which is a really good project um, that I got into recently. So he's a he's got his eye on the ball. He's he's riding all of the hype tokens, and I sort of use this to identify what's popular, what's trending, what are the smart money buying, and um, we can see here his conviction as well, right? Because his biggest bag is going to be the project he's has most conviction in. So Tao's his biggest bag. He's got really high conviction in SAVM. And then OLAS, then P's, et cetera. Excellent. So there's a question that came up. They said, well, what kind of software is that? What is what is Wes using here? Uh, so this program is called Nansen. So it's N-A-N-S-E-N. -E and it's quite it's quite a technical um, bit of kit. You can trade, you can uh, monitor NFTs, you can monitor anything on the Ethereum chain. Um, they're integrating new chains, so I'm still waiting for Solana to get added. Um, but most of the activity will be on um, Ethereum and, and Layer 2s. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I think uh, for everybody who's like wondering that question, like, well, that's pretty cool. Maybe I should take a look at that. On all honesty, I think the best way to do is just, uh, there's a link in the description. Go and follow Wes because he's going to show you more things on that than this channel will ever will. So check that out. I'm sure he's got links to that. We can go from there. So Wes, thanks. Uh, that's interesting. That, you know what that reminds me of? There was this mythical creature called whale number three, which everybody loved to, to track and what was happening with the Bitcoin Bitcoin price and what they were selling and dumping. It's like you've taken that, but like to like the nth degree maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very similar to that. Well, that's a great segue for the next topic we're going to cover, which <laughs> a trader just made a boatload of money on uh, Satoshi VM by using a banana gun. No jokes. So we covered this yesterday, actually, because we did a, a uh, an updated DEX video about how to use a DEX. And for 2024, we you took a look at uh, Uniswap and Orca and Jupiter and different projects that actually uh, work pretty well in different wallets. And one of the things that we we did is we bought Satoshi VM live on the on the on the video. What I like about this, it's a ZK roll up layer two solution. And nobody paid me for this. Nobody paid me for the DEXs. I'm just telling you, it looks like a pretty good project. I like this total supply of 21 million. And it's very interesting to me how it goes, but 
the very first day this launched, everybody got super bent out of shape because everybody was talking about it, which makes a lot of sense because it's a looks like a pretty good project. And they're like, hey, everybody's dumping on me. And I'm like, what's your problem? What is the problem? Because the, the problem is if you, just like we talked about, you double your money and you don't want to take any profits depending on where you get in, right? So you do stuff like this and then people are like, why is everybody dumping on me? It's because you didn't take any profits along the way. And I put this out, you know, if you got in the very beginning at six bucks and of course people are like, I'm going to take some profits and they don't do it. They don't do it. They don't do it. And then everybody's a victim. It's not the case. Everybody, there's ways to do this. Like if I would have, if I would have, because I didn't get in early. I'll just tell you that right now. If I didn't, uh, if I doubled, if I 2X, I'm taking my initial investment out and I'm going to let, let the other money ride. Or maybe I take even more, like 120%, let the rest ride. It doesn't matter. But if you're making money, take some profits. There's a reason why I have that underneath me on my rules. The very last rule is take profits. And today this is actually doing, well, it's actually doing pretty damn good, 12 bucks. So I'm just going to ask you, Wes, how would you play this in this situation? Because you know, like you just said that, that whale is a pretty high conviction here. Would you hold out? Or would you be like, if you're up 2X, what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. So I can probably share. Let's have a look on chain at um, Satoshi VM. We can see the activity. Can you can you see this? Got it. Yeah. So here's all the DEX trades. So first of all, I look and see how much activity we have. And we can see on the right here, you've got one second, one second, one second, one minute. So we can see there's a lot of volume going through. That's that's the first sort of thing I want to see. How is the volume um, doing across the over time? Yeah. Obviously, it's only been running three days, so we don't have much activity here, but we do have a hell of a lot of volume. I think this was doing over mm -hmm. 140 million trading volume at one point. So there's hell of a lot of eyes on it. Um, I'll then go to the token balances. And I want to know not just what the smart money are doing, but what's what's the spread? Do we have any dangerous amounts of tokens in specific, specific wallets? And here we can see 30% of the supply is in two separate wallets. Um, mm. So a little bit of worrying because, I mean, that's $20 million in one wallet. There's $18.6 million in that wallet. So this would be alarm bells for me. So first thing I would do is tag both of these wallets. And then I would add them to my Discord so we see all the transactions on these wallets. So if these guys start moving the money to Uniswap from these wallets, it's an alarm bell for me to get out or to pay attention. What, what are they doing with this money? The rest of the spread's not too bad. You know, we've got um, Uniswap, 6%, 3%, 2%, 2%. Mexi have 2%. This isn't too bad, but this is quite, quite alarming. So First of all, I want to check what these are. I, they might be staking contracts, but they don't actually look like contracts. They look like just standard wallets. But go into it, do some research, try and find out what they are. Then I'd look at the smart money. So let's see what the smart money are doing. We've got a mixture today. Let's look at the biggest holders. So smart dex trader, someone put DCA'd in some more, 87K. Um, this week, someone put 762,000 in. Uh, this guy we looked at earlier put 276,000 in. So smart money, you're putting considerable amounts of money into this, this project. Um, another nice trader here that I really like, uh, tends to make profits a lot of the time, has put 65,000 this week, currently worth 77,000. So they're not up that much. That's another thing I like to see. You don't want to come into a project where everyone's up 300 hundred percent four hundred percent because then you're kind of behind the herd um so obviously this is just on-chain data you want to go into the project who are the can we see the team i i've not been able to find the team so far on this project and i don't like to gamble too much so you know if it's just a pipe dream and a website um you know i like to see a team there but the on-chain data does look good you've got volume you've got smart money they're buying today they're not in massive profits it's it's not a bad one for me personally yeah. Yeah. And that's what it is. And you said it perfectly. I'm not a gambler. I don't want to gamble. This is a, everybody. This is a gamble. If you look at this, like this is guaranteed you are in the wrong place. Now there is other different products to get into that have been more safer. I would, uh, that's the reason why that my portfolio is 70% Bitcoin, roughly five to 10% Ethereum. And then Solana is uh, really picking up because of the value increase that it's done. So just remember the things that we talk about, you're gambling. And uh, hopefully it works out, but that's why we have rules in place. And of course, we can't tell you what to do. We're not financial advisors. I'm not your dad. Wes probably isn't. So <laughs> this is this is what we got. So talking about the gambling aspect of it, there's mm. this. There's a pretty good story here, which was uh, 
the banana gun, which I've never heard of this in my in my life. So this was a piece that came out yesterday. The trader, there's a trader that paid 141 ETH bribe to secure 6.7 million profit on the Satoshi VM launch. And I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because like we talk about, we just talk about Satoshi VM and how great it is, right? It looks like a pretty good project, but you have to understand there's people, there's puppet masters behind the screen that are pulling the strings. And this is exactly what's going on. So this trader used the banana gun sniping tool. Wes, have you ever heard this in your life? Yeah, I'm, I'm an investor in uh, bots. I got into Unibot uh, around March last year um, and Banana Bot is just, the it's killing all of them off really it's so fast um it's all yeah. about speed in that game trader bots that's why i'm not a this is why i'm not a big trader because i cannot compete against that i'm a buy and holder type of person i'm waiting for blow off tops and <laughs> that's it and this this reaffirms that affirmation so the question then is how'd they do it here's how they did it to initiate the process the trader utilized the banana gun trading bot they purchased 2.61 million satoshi vm tokens for 277 277 ether so if you have like six hundred eighty-one thousand dollars laying around, you can do this. It's it's totally doable. But if you don't, it's still tough. Trader had to pay one hundred forty-one ETH bribe to be the first to acquire SAVM upon opening, and allowed them to secure over two and a half million tokens. They then sold those two point one six million tokens for four point three eight million, while retaining roughly half a million tokens. The value was three million. They profited six point seven. What's the banana gun, banana gun bot? It's a Telegram bot, which you saw, which allows you to facilitate trades. It's used primarily for sniping. It involves rapidly buying newly released tokens like uh, Satoshi VM. Released in 2023, gives users a choice between manual trade, which is a 0.5% fee, automatic sniper, 0.75%. So right now you're thinking to yourself, I got to get on that. We just wait. Last part is this. It's got a checkered past. Launch the bot's token. Its price dropped 99% due to a bug in it. All the, all the bot itself has been marked by instances of disappearing funds. So now if you want to trade, now is the time for you to step up and go, I can do that. Anyhow, Wes, what's your thoughts on this one? Because I'd like to share like both sides of the story. So people aren't like, I'm going to do that. Yeah, it's it's a cool industry. Um, I think it's a great marketing campaign, this whole story for Banana Bot. I think everyone right now is searching, how do I use Banana Bot? Um, where do I go? The bot activity if you look over the last six months it's just going up and up and up and up so mm. i think we're seeing more and more um degens enter the market especially with these meme coins trying to trying to snipe it used to be quite a skilled uh trade so to speak that only devs knew how to do they would sit and monitor the liquidity on uniswap and they would oh. watch and wait for liquidity to be added and then they would buy and they made a colossal amount of money because you had to have some basic dev skills to amend the contracts and 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 change all the charges mm -hmm. uh but now the bots eliminate eliminate all that completely so you just literally type in the contract so if you if you find out a new token's launching and it's going to be super hyped you literally put in the contract into banana bot and just put your money in and it will wait and then as soon as the liquidity gets added it will snipe it the problem is you're competing now against thousands of other bots so you get these people who are paying these bails to front run the other bots and everyone's trying to front run each other with higher gas fees but banana bots are fastest you got maestro is pretty good unibot is pretty good and if you look banana bot literally and unibot both integrate integrated into solana in the last week so now we're going to see what we had on ethereum on solana so i think we're going to see massive adoption on these bots well i could see that that's all you guys that's for the smarter generation that's why i got you on west to explain it to me because i'm like that sounds risky <laughs> as hell but it sounds good all right, everybody. So again, uh, if you want to follow Wes, I would definitely recommend that if you're if this type of thing interests you. It's very interesting to me. But now, Wes, let's move from uh, some of the risky stuff to some of the somewhat risky, but not as much. And that is, of course, the Bitcoin and Bitcoin mm -hmm. having. So we got 93 days to go. I mean, look, these are the good times. I think we're in the Goldilocks period right before the halving. We could see a dip. We could see, you know, just stagnation. But I think this is the time to kind of be in the market, especially a year from now to 16 months. Having said that, there was this quick piece. This is from, uh, well, it's from Guy over Coin Bureau. The CEO, of Franklin Templeton, came on, and this is on uh, CNBC. And she talked about Bitcoin, about why they got into the ETF market. Now, as a reminder, uh, Franklin Templeton is a very old industry as far as institution goes, and they have 1.5 trillion assets under management. And this a couple of things that they said, it's good to know, 
but there's this one last piece that really irks me. So I'm going to have you take a listen to this. These are the things that I don't think about a lot as far as like why people get into Bitcoin, but something that she even said that reminded me. So just take a listen. This is about a minute or so, and then we'll, we'll jump back. Uh, and, um, you know, one of the things that made me a believer is as I went around the world talking to people who would tell you, I, I had somebody who said, I keep 50% of my savings in Bitcoin because if I say the wrong thing in my country, I could have my assets confiscated. Uh, I remember talking to somebody in Israel who said, my parents and their parents had all of their assets confiscated. They keep a portion of it in Bitcoin. So there's a fear component to it um, that is considered almost a insurance or, or safety component. But I also think it's really important to fueling what is a, a next real opportunity in this blockchain world. Right. So, I mean, the well, before we get to the second part, Wes, any thoughts on this one? Because like as an American, I don't think about these things. And this is my... This is my bias. I don't think about losing. I, I, I don't think about my the, the dollar as the world reserve currency going to zero or losing assets or actually being things taken away. I mean, I, I worry about, uh, of course, banks collapsing, but that's why we have FDIC insurance was up to like 250,000 or whatever it is. Mm. But any thoughts on this one was about people looking into Bitcoin? Yeah, I think I think we're in a new new time with this Harvey. We've got like the institutions. I never thought we'd see BlackRock saying, you know, <laughs> invest in Bitcoin uh, as a hedge against, uh, you know, even for your retirement, but a, a hedge against inflation. But he was using the words retirement, and it's it's mind blowing. What what she's saying there is so true, right? You you don't really own anything. Your your house, if if anything goes wrong, or if they want to take your house, uh, you know, they'll take it. So mm -hmm. it's it's a really cool way to truly own your your own money and it's not owned by anyone so the government want to come to and try and control bitcoin or, or or find it they can't do anything so yeah i'm i'm 100 percent all for it own your own own your own money basically um 100 yeah. percent. yeah i gotta and it's one thing i don't really think about because if you think and of course people in the comment section you're well welcome to to chime in but if you think about it we really don't own anything anything because like i mean the properties that we own uh, I mean, we own them, but if we don't pay the tax on them, they get they go right back to the government. Your card, you can own that outright, but of course, if you don't pay the government for the taxes, and then of course you register that, then they can also take that away or uh, uh, make it so you cannot drive it. And of course, the cash that, that you have in the banks, of course, that can go away pretty easily as well. And I know people will say, what about precious metals? I mean, that's one of the few things you actually own, but I don't know, like I have gold, my brother has gold and silver, they, we physically own that. But if you're keeping it someplace else, if you want to move that around, <laughs> good luck. And of course, there's a lot of different things, even like electronic things like these days, like do you game players right now? Uh, I think it was, I forgot the, the gaming studio, but they came out and said, hey, you're going to own nothing. And that's just how it's going to be because everything's going to be digital purchases. And you're not going to be able to actually own it if you want to take it away. And we, we are. So I, I think about these things. I'm like, it's just true. We don't own jack anymore it's just a, that's just a shame so let's just finish up here this is that's my little rant sorry i was so th this part right here is what what i say like the way things should be and the way things are going to be just take a listen to this the scenarios that you just outlined that's the case for holding bitcoin the actual you know you have the keys to the security as opposed to investing in an etf right so there's there's a use case for both for sure but that yeah. still keeps a floor on the sure. price right yeah. so it keeps on the floor on the price and then if you've actually tried to acquire and deal with the keys it's really complicated yeah right <laughs> i mean i did it at one point and then i was trying to actually figure out how to get back in and it's hard and so being able to open it up and have access to that through an etf and just simply through your brokerage account is is a much better way to access <laughs> I got to tell you, first of all, I would say the same thing. If I was offering an ETF, I'd be like, look, you guys can't figure it out. You're just too dumb. So let us do that and uh, we'll take care of you. No problems. Wes, what do you think, man? I think I think it's good for institutions who just want to have it like a stock, right? They just want to yeah. have it on their ETF portfolio. They don't want to mess around with digital keys and you know hardware wallets. And what if someone gets the key? And you got a lot of boomers who obviously don't even can't even comprehend, you know, using a hardware wallet and connecting it to the blockchain and stuff like this, right? So I think it's good for institutions, and we and I think we will see money over time flow flow into the market. Um, but yeah, for me, 
you know, in my community, I'm just like, not your keys, not your crypto, you know, look after your, your own. I've got four hardware wallets. That's how like crazy yeah. I am with, with security, different brands, different types scattered around all over. Um, so yeah, not your keys, not your crypto, hundred percent. That's a smart thing to say. You know what? You mean you're the same person. Like I have three different types of wallets. I've got a ledger. I've got my Tangem. Same. <laughs> and I've got my Elliot Pal. And, and the reason is because like, if we're going to diversify this much, why don't we diversify our, our, our hard cold storage wallets? I and mean, why not? Right. Especially if they, yeah. And then, you know, to, to get back to your point, like I said, like there's the way things that the way things that should be and the way things that are going to be. There should be, everybody should have their own keys. They should self custody. And that's just the way it should be because you should own everything that you are supposed to. The way it's gonna be is like what you said, Wes. I mean, there's a lot of people out there like, I don't trust myself. I can't do it. Hell, uh, so my family members can't even remember their password that they made yesterday for, for their website. So they're just like, I don't wanna deal with it. And for those people, if you're here and you're underneath the umbrella, I'm happy. At some point, maybe we can get you on our side to self custody, but hey, you know what? As long as you're here, I'm pretty happy. We'll go from there. And then lastly, before we do a little Q&A, Wes, I don't know what kind of time frame you got, but uh, we should- I got, got all the time, Rob. No problem. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Let's just talk about this and then we'll do a little- People got a bunch of questions for you. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. I'm- There's one more thing I'd like to show you if I could get the tech to work right. Yeah. No X worry. payments. X payments. This just was an account that was created a couple of days ago, so everybody knows. And you can follow right now. It's at X Payments. There's a reason why Elon Musk and the team at X are getting money transmitter license. I think they have it in over 16 different states in the United in the US, and they're trying to build that. But it looks like payments are coming. The question is, how is this going to look? And this is just us being dubious speculation. Wes, what do you think? How can what are they going to do for payments? And how's this actually going to work? Well, yes, it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's, big, it's big speculation, right? I think Elon, he started PayPal, right? And I think this was his dream from day one to have like this massive online banking social system, um, which he now seems to be rolling out. So um, I'd like to see, we don't know if it's going to be, what chain it's going to be incorporated in, if it's going to be, um, you know, if it's going to be crypto native, or as far as I've, I've looked so far, but I've not seen too much information about it. But I think it's going to be good for the space, right? If, if, if it is going down that avenue and we're going to see um, digital payments through Twitter or maybe even Twitter integrated into the blockchain or something like that, I think it's going to be good news for the space. Yeah, I got to agree. And I, I, I think it's good for the space. I just don't know what it's going to be. I don't know because everybody would say, well, it's going to be Dogecoin because that's what that's what uh, he always talks about. But I'm not so sure because before in his in Elon Musk's profile, he had two logos, essentially X and the Dogecoin logo. And now if you look at his logo and Elon Musk, it's just like I think it's he's the mayor of Trollville and he has got this little goofy thing. So <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be. I there was a theory the PayPal CEO was on the PayPal CEO was on MSNBC and he said that uh, on the 25th of January they're going to release they're going to roll out a new product that's going to shock the world so people say well there's a combination between Elon and PayPal PayPal allows crypto payments maybe they're going to do something or something who knows but i will say this if it's whatever they choose i hope it's something that's in my bag <laughs> cuz i'd like to i'd like that to, that's the moon but that's it for today everybody so look if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.